Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the 10th episode of Ishizoku Reviewers. And last episode, we got to check out some undead girls. Some of us had a decent time, some of us had an absolutely horrible time. It really depends on what you got. If you got a literal skeleton, then your enjoyment was at a pretty low level. If you didn't, it was at a slightly higher level. I guess I could probably sum up the whole experience. Krim did not come. Well, he did not go with them. He did come in his own way because he did visit an establishment. It was quite a bit of fun. I think it involved like a witch and slime. I mean, what more needs to be said? That sounds like a fantastic time right there. But of course, the best thing about the episode was this director chick called Bye Banana, who just had, she kind of stole the show really with her amazing film direction there. Just, you could tell she really loves her art and really gets into it. So I, that, that was conveyed fully to me. So I was pretty into it as well. But by the end of the episode, they did a pretty good job of building up this episode because they're supposed, supposedly going to a place kind of known as Perfect Score Paradise. And, Having a perfect score as a brothel in this world is a pretty big deal because, well, different strokes for different folks. I'm pretty sure I've talked about that a decent amount. Like, like reptiles laying eggs isn't for everyone, so that place isn't going to get a perfect score. So I do wonder what kind of place could possibly have, like, consistently good enough scores where it would have a name like, a nickname like that. So I'm pretty excited to get into it and find out, will all of our... Will our heroes give it a perfect score? Perhaps. They can be pretty picky sometimes. But... Let's find out. Three, two, one, play. Yeah, well said. Well put. Yeah, Magic Metropolis was where we're going. And of course, a centaur to carry our stuff. And good God, am I thirsty. Not a terrible idea. Whew, that's a fairly good looking centaur there. Yeah, of course. Of <laughs> naturally. It's a great service, you know. <laughs> Can't deny that. It's the biggest win win. Ah, uh, Krim is tired. You want to go to Betty Bye? I don't know why I phrased it that way. <laughs> well, there you go. It's bedtime. I mean, we could put out the fire, but let's live dangerously. If it's lewd, we love it. Just what more needs to be said about this show, really. So yeah, the magic, whew, magic metropolis. I'm sure it's a magical place. Wait, one thing I forgot to mention in my little intro thing was, yeah, other reviewers. That's a thing. Oof. <sighs> How about no? Yeah, the hyena girl had a had a good role last episode. But yeah, I really am curious about the perfect score place. Like, I, my hopes are pretty high, so hopefully they aren't dashed. I mean, because they got a pretty mess score for the the perfect place where you got to fully customize your experience. You know, the one original Succubus place? So, oh wow. Uh, are we meeting with a king? Because if this is a brothel, that's pretty impressive. Uh, although I guess not super surprising for this show. But damn. It's like straight out of an RPG. It's just gorgeous. I really love the color scheme. Oh, is that like a witch girl? Uh, huh. I just, there's clones of her. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I did notice that. Somebody copy pasted NPC, I see. Yeah, 
Let's not question that too much. Let's keep going. We know what we're here for. Although this is very unsettling. No, thank you for letting us come here. 5,000 gold. Please do. I'm very... I'm... Just, I'm ready. Just... I guess it's just some kind of cloning magic. I don't know. Oh. A decoy doll. Right. <laughs> Poof. Don't worry, I'll I will get my money's worth out of you. One way or the other. <laughs> simple commands, you say? I got a few simple commands I'd give. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that would work on something. Yeah, it's pretty next level stuff. The substitution jutsu goes all out. I believe that. <laughs> That's why it's a br brilliant business idea. Yeah, so I mean, you could... I guess you could pretty much be as rough as you want, right? If it's just like a doll. <laughs> uh... <laughs> People have all sorts of tastes. Well, that's, I suppose, understandable, albeit a bit disappointed. <laughs> uh, well, that's not too good. <laughs> Jeez. No shame. <laughs> like, I, don't, I can understand why to take it various places, though. <laughs> uh, yes, there would be plenty of complaints. Like, my children play at this park, could you not, please? Jeez. Uh, I, I mean, I wasn't thinking that much, but, uh... I guess it means pretty much anything goes as far as... as far as roughness goes. <laughs> Mochiron. Yes, you're a mind reader. Not really what I wanted a tour of exactly, but... <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, that was an evil look. That was a Kikaku Dori kind of look. Oh! Okay, I guess it's time to see the sights. Whew. It's probably probably a pretty good idea. <laughs> I don't think Krim is ready for this. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's nice and warm. <laughs> You could say that. <laughs> yes, pretty, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't stab her with that thing. <laughs> I like where the camera is as she says that. That's it's clever. Yeah, Krim, it's it's just it's a it's a doll, you gotta gotta make good use of it. You, yeah, let's not waste the wow. Let's not waste the doll, Krim. A lot of people would appreciate it more. Oof. <laughs> Who needs where we're going we don't need sponges. I mean we got the best sponges we could ever ask for. Yeah. Gotta be thorough. Whew. Take a few days to clean that thing, though. I bet. It'll look like a very relaxing bath. 
<laughs> well, I guess he got his money's worth, too. Really can't argue with that. It's an amazing business model. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> this is what he thinks about while falling asleep at night. <laughs> it's his version of counting sheep, basically. And dead. Is she making him breakfast? Oh wow, naked apron. Wow, he yeah, this it's a fantastic idea. <laughs> it's just an amazing service no matter how you look at it. Yep, that's oh, that's not what I thought it was gonna look at. But that's nice too. <laughs> the the Meatles would get a true score. Yeah, I mean, it's a doll. It's all good. <laughs> uh oh, anything you say. I can see that feature being useful. <laughs> I, it's okay. Thank you for that information. <laughs> uh, there's, there's all sorts of people, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh... I'm sure there's some people that want her to vomit on them as well, so hopefully she can do that too. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I can guess what he wants. Like a friggin' newlywed couple kind of thing. That's really what it comes across as. <laughs> and there we go. I mean, you'll probably get bored of it before the three days are over. Pretty much what I was saying. Uh, it's a face. I wasn't sure what I was looking at at first, but yeah, that was a face. That is not a face. It's better than a face. In fact, I wish my face was in it. Anyway. Oh! <laughs> Hello? Yes, yeah, studying. I'm paying attention to that. <laughs> Man, why... I feel like my studying method in high school was inefficient compared to this. <laughs> that phrasing, really. Yeah, this is a steal, like, seriously. Well, I couldn't blame him, really, if he was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the school system can learn a lot about a lot, lot, learn a lot from this work environments. Well, things change. I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> of course, he's the one doing this. No, nothing not really surprising. <laughs> uh, but it's a doll, so you can do that. So. Is that thing ever gonna regenerate? I swear it's made no progress that I can see. Yeah, that's where we met. Yeah, rocks and trees, they all look the same on this planet. I would love that. I don't think she meant literally Krim. <laughs> I know, right? The possibilities are endless. Yes. I believe in you. You can do them both at once. <laughs> Krim, you've been on the show long enough, you should have been able to guess what she meant. <laughs> it's only been like 10 seconds, Krim. Hold out longer than that. <laughs> well, there you go. 
What are you going to do with that? I guess if I know where it teleports to. Oh, well, that's weird. Yeah. Where is this going? Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was glorious. That was a fun episode. Time well spent. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. That was a damn good scene. I mean, it's the same episode, so. <laughs> Please don't call it that. That's what I'm wondering. Uh, we got a clone crim. Because I'll take one. Damage test zones. Oh, yeah. How does she see with all that hair? A neutral surface. Vit, vit, vici, vit, I don't know that word. <laughs> Jesus. They're going as far to show that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jesus woman. Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's one divine donut. I know, right? Man, those eyes disturb me. But anyway, yeah, this has been a fun trip, I would say. Oh no, the three days are up. I uh, love my life just fading in front of me. Be very sad. <laughs> Uh, I was kind of expecting her limbs to be gone at this point. Uh, they're all disappearing. It's honestly a little bit sadder than it should be. Spend three days bonding with someone that makes your dreams come true and just... Oof. <laughs> you get a perfect score. <laughs> you have a repeat customer now, or several. Real work. Spread the reviewer's perfect score across the land. Business will boom. Oh, is that soap? I think so. Who's got time for that, really? That does, doesn't sound too bad, you know, if you're into the big titties thing. You really can't argue with the, the value of Prospect there. Like, why would you go anywhere else? And that's an underrated feature. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what I was thinking. That's pretty much the only downside. <sighs> and yeah, ball tens across the board. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> yes, I understand. This is a valuable education right here. <laughs> yeah, just we've been doing it. We've been living life wrong or hold this whole time. Let's head on over there. 
Wow. Yeah, he definitely won a lot on that. <laughs> what in tarnation. <laughs> and then Krim's turn. Which is the most innocent of them. Like, it straight up looks like a standard date. Rather than, you know, having her tied up in your dungeon. Everyone enjoys their doll differently. Yeah, except, you know, she's gone after a few days. That's the only downside. I'm sure you will. <laughs> yeah, that's a great selling point right there. Just, that should be there. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly the entire world's getting very motivated. I'm pretty busy. <laughs> it must be, you know, as long as you're not into flat chests. <laughs> well, being busy is a good thing. It means you're successful and you're not bored. Oh, who is this? Those black pearls? <laughs> who are you? Is that an elf? I, no, or a demon. I think it's a demon. Uh, but still. Who are you? Hello? Can we help you? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if she can just lay one on command. Or even if, even if she could, I don't think she would. But if we're if he's accepting orders, yeah, I'll place one. So yeah, we got to see what the perfect establishment was like, and it's really not bad. I can definitely see that having widespread appeal. There's a little bit of something for everyone there, which is probably a big part of the key to a success. As long as you, as long as you're okay with this, that very specific body type. That is basically perfect, yeah. Because you can either have the innocent girlfriend experience that Krim was getting, or you could have the more BDSM kind of thing that, uh, I can't remember that little guy's name. Cran Crunch? Something like that. The experience that he had. <laughs> or you could just have kind of the, the energetic newlywed experience that, that Skunk was having. Making you breakfast, just... Yeah, pretty good stuff. I mean, yeah, a service where you can essentially rent a girlfriend for three days and you could basically do anything you want to. Where do you sign up, you know? Who would say no to that? The only problem is the lack of variety and options. Uh, pants. Uh, I need more, need more, need more time. Uh, <laughs> uh peanuts. <laughs> yes. Oh. Hello? Uh, gee, I never would have guessed. <laughs> uh, I literally can't, and even if I could, I wouldn't. That was a weird final scene. But okay, Professor Oak, you do you. 
over. Okay, that was the 10th episode of Ishizoku Reviewers. And this episode, the much built up Perfect Score Paradise, we venture to, you know, the magical metropolis, all that. After having a bit of discussion about the whole, you know, centaur thing, we decided to come over here. And we saw a girl. Multiple copies of that girl. First thing that came to mind was Baldur's Sky. I haven't actually finished anywhere near finished that visual novel, but it did have something where like a, an NPC was copied here and there. It kind of, kind of reminded me of that. Like somebody just took an NPC, copy pasted it to serve as different people at different times. And that's basically what she does. Like from what I can tell, she she's a powerful magic user. She makes copies of herself and then just kind of rents them out to the people that want them. And then they can just pretty much do whatever they want within, you know, within the law, you know, no public indecency, public exposure laws violating stuff. As long as you don't do that, because we don't really want the mayor knocking at our door and complaining again. But with, with the exception of that, you can pretty much do whatever you want because they're not, they're not real people. They're essentially, for all intents and purposes, like, you know, a sex bot. So, no matter how you look at it, this is an incredible deal for the customer. An incredible... I mean, it's, it's an incredible value prospect for both the person running the business and the customers, which makes it kind of a perfect business, really. Because there's very little overhead for her. She just poofs a new one, and they don't have to spend very much on her, and they get a lot of time with her. Like, they said it was comparable to, like, an hour at a normal brothel, and that's that's just kind of incredible. And I was curious, like I said, what exactly could possibly make a place known as Perfect, perfect Score Paradise? Like, what place could consistently enough give get perfect scores, and how do they do it? Like, what what could you possibly do? Because I imagine a place that could fully customize the the girl you're with, like the other place we did, uh, that that has the potential to be a perfect score paradise because everyone can get what they want, but it didn't. But this place good. This place could, and we finally got our answer because. You know, you pretty much just do whatever you want. You want to take a long walk on the beach with her? You want to have her make breakfast for you in a naked apron? Do you want her to get tied up in your dungeon and whip her and brand her and slap her and spank her? Like, whatever you want, you just, just go for it. So, yeah, just... I can't see anyone coming here leaving disappointed, right? Because one caveat that was really mentioned is that, yeah, if you're into flat chests or lollies, this doesn't really afford you because you got one body type and you, you deal with it. However, that's something that you know pretty much going in, right? Like, that's not something that would be a later disappointment. So you would, if you were one of those people, you wouldn't sign up to begin with. So anyone that does sign up would leave happy because you can do whatever you want, you know? So yeah, I can definitely understand why this is as popular as it is. And after we all had a very satisfying experience, the reviews just scattered across the world. And everyone was like, what am I doing here? Just, I gotta, I gotta get over there. And it wasn't, oh yeah, also studying, you know? We found out that the key to efficient studying is that, you know? The ultimate cheat sheet, the ultimate study buddy. <laughs> just, yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know much more I can say about this. We found there's basically a literally perfect business model here. With the exception of no model customization. That's really the only problem here. It's a big problem, though. But it's not... For a lot of people, it's not a problem. It just slightly limits the customer base. But the customers that they do get come away happy. And that's the key to success right there. Because the thing is, you're never going to satisfy everyone, right? So the best thing you can do is have a certain demographic of people and make sure those people... Become away satisfied. That's basically what the place does. Because, yeah, to get perfect reviews, you don't have to literally be something that everyone can enjoy. You just have to have something that everyone that comes there walks away satisfied with. So I do feel like I'm repeating myself a lot here. But I really don't know what more to really say about it. It's just... Everyone was... It's just very... It's very rare that we get all four of our people just in agreement that an establishment was literally perfect. That's what we got. We did have a little bit of weirdness here with the one with the angel juice extraction. Because we did hear about the fact that, yeah, stuff that goes inside the mouth teleports somewhere else. And my first thought when I heard that was, what does it teleport to? <laughs> Is it random? Because if it's random, then there could be some very, very upset people in random locations that just have angel juice fall on their head or fall somewhere else. 
you know, essentially kind of like bird poop, you know, where you're just walking down the road and suddenly just falls on you. Like, huh, what is this? Why is it on me? I think I need to take a thousand showers. But anyway, she wanted it. Apparently, it's pretty magical, which I guess makes sense. But it just it got progressively weirder as she was, you know, playing with it. I mean, she was looking at it, dripping it. I was like, okay, it's, it's, it's a little bit weird, but it's it's fine. Then she licked the vial. Then I'm like, no, this is this is straight up weird. This girl's just girl's weird. So that was a thing. It really was kind of sad when they faded away, because you do build up three days worth of memories with this girl, and then suddenly she just gone. Definitely, definitely got to come back after that. Anyway, I thought it was I thought it was pretty great. I doubt we're ever gonna see a place that has perfect scores like that from our crew again. But yeah, I just I am glad we brought up Crim's Halo again, because that was kind of what was brought up the first episode when they met Halo, got to be restored to return to heaven, but we haven't really made much progress on that, that as far as I can tell. Like, it still looks like a donut with a bite taken out of it. I don't know if that will ever fix itself. Hopefully it does. Anyway, yeah, that's all I got to say on the episode. I enjoyed my time with it, which is all you can really hope for. And we'll see what happens next time. Thank you for watching. And a special thanks to Snokey and Ryan for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.